Hello and welcome to Tabletop Odyssey. My name is Jay and today um, FFG have, uh, are pulling through. They said they were going to have like five new product announcements in December on Facebook and um, so you know we're getting quite a few articles and this one is essentially the elephant in the room because this was leaked a few months back now really but we've finally got the article for Iden Versio and ID10 and uh, Cassian Endor and K2SO. <laughs> Fine, you know what I mean? They were leaked, but now we've got them. And we're going to have a quick run through, nothing like too dramatic. But if you like this video, press the like. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It really does help. And uh, yeah, so as I said, let's have a look through them. So a couple of notes. These are a little bit more expensive than uh, normal um, commanders because there's two models in each box. And this is scheduled for 2000, uh, first quarter 2020, which I really sort of like because we're in December now. And this is three months away. If they could keep with that kind of window, that's what we sort of used to get. I would like to see it compressed a little bit, but these ones were leaked anyway, so it's a little bit hard to judge. Um, but yeah, I would like a shorter window of re announcement to release. And um, yeah, there's there's not that much to unpick, but we do obviously get the card and the first um, um, command card. So we'll have a quick look through this. So we'll, Cassian's first. Um, I don't see an alternative scope of Cassian. Um, oh yeah, there's a different weapon on uh, on Cassian, and um, K2SO gets a different um, pose as well. So they're probably coming on the new. I haven't properly read the article. I've just looked at the. Um, I never really, really, I never really read the article. I just look at the cards. But I'm presuming they're going to come on the new uh, sprues. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so let's have first thing uh, first. I think he looks like. Am I going crazy or is that 50 points? Either way, it's less than 100, so he's going to be quite cheap. It could very easily be 90. Um, I honestly can't make that out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And um, so there's, a, there's quite a few things to unpick here, right? So he's, firstly, let's start with the basics. You get two models. Now, I don't think that K2SO uh, is a counterpart because he looks like he's a droid. Uh, he looks like he's got a pure card on his own. It doesn't look like a counterpart card. So I'm not sure you're going to be able to take him as a counterpart. I could be wrong. There's also this weird small token, which I guess is probably related to K2SO. I guess if you take them both, but I don't really know. Uh, obviously, that is speculation on my part. They could very easily be counterparts. Another thing, there's four tokens, and we'll talk about this in a minute. Um, his actual card, whatever amount of points it is, between 50 and 100. <laughs> it's uh, six wounds, two courage, uh, surges on both hits and uh, defense. Uh, range 1 to 2 weapon, 2 uh, red dice in melee, and you can see the upgrades there. So um, he can take this weapon, which is a, essentially a proper sniper rifle, which I'm a little bit surprised to see considering they've errated the normal sniper rifle. This is 1 to infinity, uh, red and black dice. Yeah, okay, right, fair enough, looks decent. His actual cards are interesting, so this covert ops, when you deploy, because he's a commander, as a, when you write your list, he's a commander. I think that's going to be the case, I don't think you're going to be able to get around that. When you write your list, he's a commander, but when you deploy, you can essentially treat him as an operative and he gains infiltrate. Now, obviously, I'm not, you could probably do that and end up with no commanders. I don't, And then you'll have to nominate a commander, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, can you do that before the game starts? Would you even have a commander for round one? I don't know, but either way, it's, it's interesting. Generally, if you're going to do that, I think you're going to want to have an, another commander. Probably. I think that's likely. Um... Danger Sense 3 we know about, so that's going to be good for uh, defending if you've got that suppression. Um, loadout, now Loadout and Marksman are two really interesting um, keywords here. So Loadout essentially says you're going to have alternative upgrades. So let's say you take this weapon, maybe you can also take that weapon as an alternative upgrade. Maybe you take... Um, hunter or whatever and you can take instead of taking that one you can take this one it's really interesting in that sense uh, my guess i think would be like what everybody else would guess it's likely that you'll pay the more expensive one and then you can just write down a slightly cheaper one or the same cost one and then as the game starts you can pick which ones are more relevant to the battle that's really good for tournaments really if you if you've got quite significant loadouts and you can tailor it to your enemy when you see what the enemy's brought yeah, I quite like that. Loadout's a pretty interesting um, keyword. We'll have to wait and see how you actually use it, but it's definitely going to be interesting. Now, Marksman essentially lets you change 
um, one of your dice. It lets you improve one of your dice results per per aim token. I'm guessing at that part. That part. So what I imagine that is, I think there'll be a hierarchy. So I think it'll be you can make a blank a surge, a surge a hit, a hit a crit, etc. Um, you might be able to skip the surge. You might be able to make a blank a hit because the surge on some of them isn't an improvement at all. So. Um, I'm not really sure how that will work, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be one dice per aim token because taking a hit to a crit is pretty strong. Um, yeah, and would make sense. I, th I think it's going to be per aim token. And I say per aim token because you might get access to multiple aim tokens via tactical one or via, you know, being handed to them or what have you. So um, that's how I feel that's going to work. So that explains two of these command, card, uh, command tokens. You can be both a commander and an operative. Um, it might explain this token if you take them both together. And I'm sort of presuming that K2SO will have the exact same thing so that they can go together. That you can maybe, maybe K2SO is a commander. But that seems a little bit weird, uh, like lore wise or Star Wars wise, I guess. I'm not, I mean, maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure. So I find that one a little bit unusual, but there you have it. As weapons go, I think the 10 points for the sniper rifle um, on Cassian is almost certainly worth it. So, uh, yeah, I would take that. And, um, yeah, yeah, um, I'm not 100% sure um, about this other weapon. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Although I think it's going to be very similar to whatever Jin's weapon is, which I cannot remember off the top of my head. I haven't seen her in play for Yonks. Um, all in all, like, if, if either way, if this is any, if this is less than 90, I'm pretty happy with that. Although that's 70, so... I, it just I just can't make it out. <laughs> but I am an old man, so do let me know in the comments below. But really, loadout is an interesting um, keyword, and Marksman, I think, also has decent potential. Depending on Cassian's price, uh, 90 points, I think he would be okay. Um, what is he going to be doing in the game? The thing is, if you're going to spend that money for a sniper, it's a lot of money for a sniper, especially when you've got actual snipers at half the cost, essentially. Um, but then again, you've got the extra command cards, etc. These command cards, his first one is going to give you Gunslinger. You're going to get, um, let's actually get this out. I'm not sure this is going to work on the screen. Oh, it's quite large. Fantastic. Uh, he's going to gain Gunslinger and a name token. You, that's going to be nice with your multiple shots. And then you're going to gain one suppression. Well, you may gain one suppression and take a standby token. So you will possibly be able to get to shoot twice. Depend as long as you don't get your standby token shot off you, which is the general problem with standby. So all in all, I do think Cassian's pretty interesting. Um, and the new plastic definitely looks like they've got some extra detail uh, here. The spindliness of the droid, uh, K2SO, is obviously useful here when it comes to the plastics. But for certain, um, yeah, like it looks like, you know, there's more gap between the head and the cloak, etc., which we, we possibly wouldn't have got if these were the original um plastic but there you have it so uh, i didn't uh, versio and um id 10 i presume that's how you pronounce it i didn't really play battlefront 2 so i do, don't uh, hate me and the, she's very similar in the sense um however the uh, id 10 literally is a, a counterpart and i'm pretty sure that that's all it will be i'm not again sure what this token is i guess this token is to do with the counterpart but it's not explained um, Iden has the two tokens because she also has the covert ops thing so you can take her your budget for her as a commander when you build your list but you can deploy her as an operative she looks to be 100 points she's got six wounds red defense dice uh, doesn't surge on the defense but does surge on the offense three courage three white dice and ps1 on the attack which i find i find her attacks a little bit underwhelming but maybe this is just me um two red on the uh, melee the weapon you can take here, I'm not obviously can't properly read and see what dice you get on this second card here, but on this one, um, it's a sniper rifle, again, range 1 to infinity, uh, pierce 1. It is 15 points, 2 black dice. I think if you're going to take a 4 pierce, then there's maybe more effective points. Well, I'd rather have 2 units of snipers, I think, than Iden, and I think that might be the problem that when these come to the meta that they'll see. However, without seeing all of the other command cards and getting seeing what the counterpart relationships are, it's actually very difficult to judge that. Um, but she's got quick thinking, so we've seen that before, so she can get an aim and a dodge um, instead of just one. And um, again, she's got covert ops. She also has the loader and the marksman. Um, nimble, I think that is the first time that uh, an Imperial at least is nimble. I'm not sure if the Clone Wars do, so don't 
don't bother correcting me. I don't really care. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's traditionally been the rebel thing. Obviously, the rebel troopers and um, Lei have had it. So it's traditionally been rebels. It's nice to see that keyword maybe getting spread out a little bit. And, um, yeah, for sure. I, again, I, I really like Loader and I really like Marksman. Turning hits to crits could be pretty decent. Uh, she does surge, so... Um, turning a blank to a surge would make sense here but I think you'd always probably want to try and take a hit to a crit because you're punching through cover depending on how many aims and stuff like that you have so um, yeah very interesting I think um, competitive wise as I said it's really hard to judge her card basically gives the same thing that Cassian's does except you get sharpshooter 2 instead of gunslinger so you're going to be able to uh, punch through cover but with what are you going to punch through cover? high velocity maybe yeah uh, high velocity the sniper rifle i was reading high, high velocity i do apologize yeah you'd maybe want to punch that and then that really need to see the second uh weapon uh cards my instinct is that they are not going to be top tier meta play right when i see this i don't think these are going to be top tier meta play but i do look at them and think um pretty decent pretty decent cards uh, very thematic and i'm always, i'd rather see thematic cards than op cards if i'm honest and um i think we're definitely going to get that she does have an L, um, a helmet on one. Oh, she gets the shield token uh, a helmet on one and one without the helmet i've got to say her face if i'm honest looks quite like her face here so I, i've got to um congratulate the sculptors it's still not perfect i think but you know you're taking a human face and making it a miniature face i'm not really gonna complain forget that as again coming out in um it'll be it's the first quarter of 2020 but if i'm like that's likely again march probably with the vital assets that we saw yesterday or the day before the day before, i'm losing track of time i've been very busy at work um so that's um Aiden and cassian Oh, you know, I, as I said, I'm not expecting top tier meta play, but to be fair, I've not been to a proper tournament in Yonk, so I could very easily be wrong. I just sort of feel like when I look at the damage output for both of them, it doesn't seem very high, but the utility might make a lot of sense when we see like the counterpart relationships, that small token, the extra command cards, etc. But my instinct says that they're not like, boom, they're not going to come on the table and completely be meta defining. But very flavorful, very happy to see them, uh, loving the actual models. Yeah. If you like this video, press like. If you're not subscribed, you're interested in the Star Wars Legion, press subscribe. Have a most beautiful day. And if you're in the UK, there's still time to go vote. Go vote. Bye.